Hello and welcome back for another live stream. Uh, this week has not been a good one for me. I developed a massive uh, bladder infection. Yeah, happens to old people. And so I went to the uh, hospital, uh, Walter Reed Military Hospital here in Bethesda, Maryland. And uh, I was treated and I uh, was given some antibiotics to take for the next 14 days. So hopefully I'll be doing okay this afternoon. I'll stay as long as I can. I'm drinking lots of liquids. This is cranberry juice and some tea mixture together. It should help my system, if you will. But I began taking the uh, antibiotics, uh, I believe it was Friday afternoon. And so we'll see. We'll give it a chance to do its job. Uh, things seem to be improving a little bit. And so anyway, like I said, I don't have anything planned today, so I am going to go ahead and rely on questions that were asked on Facebook, on my group, and also on my YouTube uh, comment section. I'm a little absent-minded right now. Um, I'm feeling a little bit uh, strange. I also then develop, of course, like kind of a cold-like syndrome. And so I might be coughing a little bit. It's not COVID. It's just a plain um, problem with the uh, throat. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have about 19 folks already. And I just wanted to let people know, especially, um, I hope Rudy comes on today. I told him that uh, I may not have the live stream. I actually um, waited until about noon today to decide. But anyway, that... that you know, I was going to do a short video last night and just cancel for today. And on Easter um, Sunday and the Palm Sunday before that, I will actually be canceling those two live stream, but move them over to Saturday. And I'll keep you abreast of, you know, those changes because we're going to be out of town those two weekends. But it's not going to be through Saturday. It's going to be from Sunday through Monday. On both of those weekends so we'll go ahead and, and throttle back throttle back one day and do our live stream on uh saturday now hoping i feel better this week i will do that demonstration using rudy's latest uh addition to his setup for vacuum filling and again like i stated many times before it's just another method we're not trying to circumvent anyone um, who is, uh, for example, like Rick Johnson, who uh, has been working like a dog, creating uh, pre-modified cartridges for us. Let's just stick a bottle with a needle in it and fill it. Simple as that. You don't have to sweat any, any drops of sweat, you know, working through the um, so-called modification uh, process and then waiting days for it to, uh, you know, the cartridges to dry. Using the other method is only simply for those of you who want to forego that and want to end up with cartridges that have no modification whatsoever. So these look like they are untouched OEM cartridges because of that. And that that's it. It's only for those folks who do not want to deal with a modified cartridge. And I'll be doing that demo. I'll be giving you some tips and tricks on uh, how to avoid problems because every refilling method is not perfect. There is no such thing as perfection out there. So you could mess up. There's always a chance to mess up. And I'm going to try to walk you through and show you uh, some of the little pitfalls that you can avoid by paying attention 
what you are doing. And I'm going to be, once I feel better as well, I'm going to be uh, rewriting uh, Rudy's instructions so that it is more Americanized, you know, for the regular folks. And so, and anyone else that has a good handle of uh, just regular plain old English, um, it should be nice. Um, and then you can just buy your inks, whatever inks you choose to use. And when your cartridge reaches empty, and again, this will allow you to run your cartridge till the chip says it's empty because it's going to, the vacuum filling method sort of prevents um, that accumulation of foam because when we use a modified cartridge, um, you're just adding ink. And so any air bubbles that are trapped because you let it go empty will be, you know, still trapped. They're not going to be expelled. The, you're not you're not refilling by pressure. You're just letting the ink flow back into the sponge. And so as you continue doing this, every time you let it go empty, you refill, let it go empty, you refill, and so forth, you're going to end up with a sponge that basically is not going to be able to hold, first of all, all the ink that it originally could hold. It's going to be reduced in the ability to hold ink. Well, when you refill via vacuum, when you apply that vacuum, those air bubbles basically are burst. You create such a strong vacuum that no little bubble can survive inside that sponge. So then when you release the pressure and ink begins to flow inward because you created such a vacuum that the only thing that could then enter is going to be ink. You'll see how it's done. And so that will then fill that sponge up as it should. So if you find some cartridges that have been allowed to go empty and the user threw away the orange clip and he sold them as such, you know, without any kind of uh, protection from drying, I'll show you a couple of little tricks to sort of pre-treat the cartridge before you subject it to refilling. That way, that port, that port right here, will be ready to accept ink. And believe me, on a dried up cartridge, that port is caked with ink, all right? So let's say hello to the folks that have braved the day and joined us, uh, 29 people so far. You can please join us here on the chat. Tell us who you are, where you are watching from, and what printers are you interested in or already own and use. Um, let's begin with Henry Stoffel, Medford, Massachusetts. And by the way, folks, it is balmy as can be outside today. And tomorrow it's going to reach almost 80 degrees. So, and then it's going to drop a few degrees later on the week, but incredible. Um, spring seems to have hit us like that. And so that, that's cool. I welcome that. I don't like the cold. Uh, Medford Mass PA100 OEM Inks QMH Ultimate new version uh, 2000, 120, 2022 120, and I believe that's what I have at this point. Unless they unless they snuck a new one on me, I'll have to check in a little bit. I did update the other day both uh, QMH1 as well as the Ultimate version. Emmanuel from Normandy, France. Uh, P300 ink out QMH1. This afternoon, I developed color negatives that I shot with a medium format camera, and I will scan them and print. Wow. Gosh, when was the last time I did that? Probably in the early, I would say, around the last time I did that for color negative uh, development, probably in 84. 1984, when I worked at the Pentagon Color Lab. Jerry Uncle is here, uh, Selkirk, Manitoba, Canada, Canon Pro 100, Rick Johnson Modified, CLI 42s, PCSE, QMH Ultimate, and Jose Rodriguez's fabulous videos and live streams. I certainly hope I can keep up with those. And so thank you so much for coming back. Harold Goldberg says, from Cloudy, Richmond, Virginia Pro 100 PCSC QMH Ultimate Rick Clean Cartridges and Rudy's Holders. 
in speaking of holders, I sent Rudy finally a uh, CLI, I mean, PGI 72 Pro 10 cartridge, and he received it along with the clip. So he's going to be creating for us a holder that will take the cartridge with the clip installed and be able to snap it in there so that it makes it easier for us to refill them and also keep track of the correct order. Anyway, that is so handy to have. I think my voice is going already. Lester Stevens, Toronto, Canada, P900 OEM inks and QMH, oh, QMH1. Deep the Palace, hope it all it goes well. I hope so as well. Uh, VC Today, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, Canon Pro 100, the usual other items, LOL. Yeah, it gets kind of uh, rep repetitious. And I'll, I'm going to talk about something that just made me, kind of made me a little bit mad, but also made me laugh. And I just went like, oh, my gosh. And we'll tell you what that is in a bit. Let me make sure that I hit everybody. Gregory from Toronto, Canada, Pro 1, Pro 10. Did I do you already? No. Uh, PC Inks, Ocumage Ultimate. Jonathan, what printer can you easily print black paper? Black papers? And can be easily refilled. Uh, a, a photo printer cannot print on black paper. You know, black paper is black. And unless you have, like, paints, basically, like wall paints, that's, you know, something thick with a lot of um, opaqueness. Uh, I don't think there's any printer that can do that. Now, printers that are used for direct-to-garment will first print a version of the image in white ink, literally. Uh, that's a titanium white type ink. And then once that is dried, it, it retracts the, the printed material back in and overlays the um, actual color image on top of it. By using the regular process, but yeah, you need you need you cannot print on black material, as far as I know. Jacques uh, from greet greetings from Quebec, Canada, and he's got a Pro One Hundred, Pro One Thousand. The Papala says uh, Downers Grove, Illinois. Okay, new Epson X, EX, EX, or or is it what is it? What is my printer? Is it a EX? I thought it was X something. Okay, whatever. Uh 15,000 chiplets with PC inks. Thank you for getting me started. Awesome. Big game James. Uh James in beautiful San Diego, California. Pro 100 OEM inks and use Print Studio Pro. A, yeah, expression, EX, yes, sorry, uh, 15,000, correct. Anyway, um, great, uh, that's a good printer, good printer to use. Nothing I can, I can really, the only thing I can, I can say negative about it is sometimes the feed mechanism is a little bit iffy. And like most printers of the 150 to 300, whatever, you know, 350 maybe uh, price range. They're not really built like tanks, like a Pro 100 is. A Pro 100 is a very, very rigid, stiff printer. These printers can actually be twisted slightly. If you lift the chassis on one corner, you'll actually begin to twist it before the other end begins to pop off the table. There's a bit of flex to them, but, you know, again, that's something that, it really doesn't affect the lifespan or the quality of your output. It's just that they're just not built as as well as other very heavy printers. MPM Photo, Phoenix, Arizona, Epson 3800 PSO Pro. Okay. Uh, X, X, uh, Epson 15K Chipless, PCS, PC Inks, and QMH Ultimate. Awesome. All righty. Okay, so... Let me, let me tell you what this, this comment. Here's what happens. Every week or so, I check my comments. I, I'm just going to show you. 
Let me move this out of the way here. And I will pop this over. And so this is my comment section on the YouTube channel. And on top you have published. That means that they are visible to everyone. And here are comments that maybe the algorithm decided were slightly improper or, you know, contain certain words, whatever. So like I said earlier on, I think I mentioned this last week as well. Be very careful how you word your comment because it'll just go unnoticed to me. And I only check this like once a week. So let's go ahead. Today I did. Ah, look at that already. So I answered to this guy. This is the guy right here. Speaking of wasted ink, or in this case, non-existent ink, why does Precision Colors not fill the bottles up to the top when you purchase from them? They leave more than 45 ml of empty space. I know what he's getting at. But the guy just didn't think at all. Every, every place I have bought from fills the bottles except Precision. It's a cheap move, especially when you pay a premium price. Okay. And I did answer him. And I, I answered him, and he answered me back. And he says, you totally missed the point. For the price, the extra ink should be filling the bottle. Shameful. I don't know if you're the company that sells rep, but there's no sales rep. People just don't get it. Playing down my concerns, i never gotten a set of OEM inks that can that were two-thirds full. You know exactly what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to answer this dummy in a little while, and I'm sorry I just said that, but that's that's just the way it is. Here's the, here's the facts about this. I bet you he is commenting about the PCSE inks for the Pro 1000. You are paying for exactly 82 milliliters of ink. For the others that are actually four ounce, you do get a full bottle. If you order four ounces of ink, you do get a full bottle. Okay? You got that? So here is the bottle, four ounces. This is an unopened Pro 1000, PC 1000 SE Yellow. This is a four-ounce bottle, but he is selling you 82 milliliters of ink, not four ounces of ink. Why? Why? Think about this. And I'm going to tell him this the same way. Think about this. These cartridges take 80 to 82 milliliters of ink. He's giving you two extra so that you totally fill that, that cartridge to the max. Why would you buy? I don't know what. That would be a 120 ml is what a full bottle of this would be. So let's do a little bit of math. Let's just say 80 ml. So 120 gives you what the difference is. 60. Is it? No, 40. 40 ml of ink you would have left. That would be useless to you. Because when this cartridge goes empty, you would only have 40 ml to fill it with. That will fill it to halfway capacity. And you would be P again, right? Yes. So, you know, do a little thinking before you open your mouth or, you know, your brain and start to type. Because you really don't know what you're typing about. If this is the case, and that is what he's complaining about, that he should be getting a full bottle of ink. Okay. Believe me, you are not going to get a full bottle of ink for that price, period. Oh, man. And then he then he calls me like a representative. Gosh, I, could, I wish I could have caught this prior to going live so I could answer this guy back. And I will. I will answer him. So anyway, that's what happens. These comments get put sort of in a holding, a holding condition, and they are not declared. You know, published. I'm going to declare him published though, because I'm going to get back to him. I will. Let me make sure I, I, I can do that. 
If I cannot, then I will go ahead and answer him here. Actually, I, I don't even have the option to answer him. So anyway, too bad. Maybe I can do that later in the actual comment that, yeah, it's done. It's done. Now it's published. All right, good. Wow. This is what I put up with on a daily basis. And I don't even, I don't even sell ink. Okay. I am just promoting other products that I find are good. Why would I promote something that I personally don't believe in? You see, it's crazy. I may have to call Mike and just vent a little bit with him uh, later on. Oh, gosh. Some folks, not only do they do not appreciate what they're getting, but they immediately have to complain. Now, when you buy uh, Pro 1000, no, Pro, say, 1, and you clearly can see you're buying a 4-ounce bottle. Let's go ahead and look at that. So here is the site for PC. Again, I have nothing to do with this site. So why are you coming to me when you should come to Mike and ask him? Okay, let's just look at, you know, any kind of ink. 12 tank, Pro 1000. Here we go. So we'll look at, um, let's see. Pro 1000 is being sold by the bottle. That shows a picture with full bottles, and uh, he needs to change that because this, that is the, uh, possibly confusing people like that guy. Okay, not a no modification ink, and I'm going to look for a bottle. Here we go, 82 ml. You see that clearly, Mark. When you order that ink, you're going to get 82 ml. Yes, it's going to come in a four ounce bottle. There are no 82 ml bottles. In fact, bottles are hardly you know, able to be purchased. They're very scarce as well. And caps are even worse. Buying these caps, he was almost without any caps. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, there is no other size, I believe. Yeah, you cannot buy any other size. So he's doing these uh, smaller loads so that you always have a full load of ink to put in your cartridge when it is declared empty. For those of you who are buying chips and not going through any kind of uh, chip disabling, you're going to wait until the cartridge is empty. That means there'll be a couple of drops left in it. You load your bottle with a, a cap. It will, he'll give you one of these caps. You put it on your bottle. You put a special tip on it, cartridge on top, apply pressure or vacuum, you know the process. It's going to be a vacuum or pressure fill. And you continue until you empty that bottle. That will end up giving you a full capacity load on your cartridge. Not too much, not too little. If it's too much, you're going to have a geyser of ink all over you because you will overpressurize the cartridge. Come on. You know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand this. Yeah, I don't feel good. So I'm going to be very short in the uh, patience department uh, this week. So I don't know what else to do. I really don't. But anyway, that's what I saw today. And it was like, oh, man, how can I how can I do this without really getting angry? But anyway, so if you if you are buying inks for other printers <clears throat> like Pro 10, like the Pro 300, Pro 200, the new ones, you know, the Pro 100, all of those, you could buy the regular full two ounce bottles, which will be these right here. They'll come full of ink. And the four ounce bottle will, of course, also be full of ink. And so will the eight ounce bottles. It's as simple as that. Mm. No need to really complain or lose your temper over something that is should be easily understood okay if you buy 82 ml and he decides to put it in an eight ounce bottle because that's the only bottle he has then that's where you're going to get a big bottle with a smaller amount of ink with lots of space left you're not being cheated you're still playing you're still paying for just 82 ml of ink 
That's that's the whole idea. Whether you buy the OEM load or whether you buy the third party load, you're still paying exactly for that amount of ink. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's just go ahead and answer questions from you guys. Um, keep me happy today by just simply asking questions and let me at least try to help you, um, even if my mind is not that clear today. I may have to take a break, so bear with me. You know what I mean. Okay. Okay, hello, Jose. I'm, I am using original Canon inks on my Canon Pro 10. I am now getting error B200, so... I would like to try and clean the printhead. My question is, can I put the ink carts I pull back to the carrier and still work? Sure. Um, if you need to remove your ink carts in order for you to then remove the printhead, then of course you can do that. Make sure you have a clip such as this. See this clip? A third-party clip or your original clip. Tie it with a rubber band on the bottom of your cartridge. In other words, try to duplicate the condition, the brand new condition with the uh, clip still attached. And that will prevent any ink from leaking out while you're performing this cleaning. Cleaning your printhead is not going to solve a B200 error. <laughs> so, you know, you're fooling yourself in thinking that it's due to ink problems. No, B200 is more electronic than anything. B200 is um, some sort of non-communication condition between the printhead and the printer. So quite often, turning it off completely, pulling the plug off the wall to sort of erase anything that was in the memory and then putting it back into the wall and then turning it back on, say 10 minutes later, may solve that. But quite often, if it's really a fatal error already, that's not going to solve the problem. Only a new printhead will. And so, yeah, go ahead and play with your printhead. It, it may clean it, but it's not going to solve the B200 condition because that has nothing to do with nozzles not being able to deliver ink flow at all okay boy am i crabby today that's because i feel horrible huh. oh okay let's see uh anybody here uh did i do mpm photo maybe maybe i did i don't even remember but anyway, you all can see what he has. Jerry says, um, needs more likes. Not today. Probably people will give me thumbs down today. Um, but anyway, I'll take anything. Any kind of feedback, actually, YouTube likes. But, you know, hopefully it'll be thumbs up. Cal Schultz, aloha. My in-laws, um, actually, um, Nathan's uh, paternal grandparents are headed yesterday to Hawaii for a week. Wow. That would be nice. Michael McLean says, hello from Fairbanks, Alaska Pro 100 OEM Q image. All righty. MPF photo question for Rudy. Will there be a development holder for Epson 15,000 cartridges? Um, he could probably do that as well. The idea is that it would be great, especially if you have like two sets of OEM cartridges, because if you run chipless, there's no need to deal with chips. Okay. I don't like the refillable ones that are out there. They really don't perform like an OEM cartridge performs as far as the ability to seal perfectly. And if you have a kind of an iffy seal against that printhead, because it's a contact only like a Canon printer. It's only by contact. Uh, you will start to maybe at some point start leaking some air into your uh, ink stream, and that will resolve in 
air produced banding and other artifacts. So OEM only, so buy another set of OEM cartridges, or if somebody is selling them on, on eBay empty, then you can buy them, get them from um, Rick Johnson. He's got some. You will not be able to refill them to full capacity. You will lose about three ml because they were allowed to go empty. There's an internal little valve that sort of, once it is triggered, it allows you to then get rid of the last three ml out of the cartridge, which you normally would be throwing out. And that's what people were complaining about. So Epson did implement that in newer printers to allow you, the user, to use up all the ink that was available. But when you do that, then you cannot refill it to, to top. So long story short, get a second set or your own. Never let them go empty. And then you got those holders. You always have one cartridge set ready to go. That way you can then remove the partially used up uh, pres present cartridge uh, in the printer. Remove those. Install your filled ones. You're running chipless, so it doesn't matter. It's always going to be declared as full. And then put those on your holder and then top those off as you need later. And there's no resetting. So again, all you're going to be doing is removing one cartridge, flip it upside down with the port facing up, and dribble ink directly onto that exit port. You could weigh the cartridge. Again, if they were not allowed to go empty, you should be able to get about a total weight, a total weight of 26.5. 27. 27 is, boy, you got lucky. 26.5 is probably the max. And then you will see that sponge becoming very uh, filled with liquid. Don't let it go that to that point. And if you do, then get some folded paper towel and blot it. And then go ahead and put it back in your holder. But then he would have to create a holder, first of all. But if I know Rudy, he can do it. Right now, he's making one for the Pro 10 for us. And he's going to send me a sample. I'm going to test it. I got some Pro 10 cartridges that are just pre-filled already and reset that I always have waiting on the aisles for my Pro 10 car, uh, printer. We'll go ahead and test those. We'll pop them into the holder here in front of you all when I do receive the first uh, version of this uh, holder. If he can get the sample that I sent him, then you know it's going to work. So Stephen Polboy has, from Toronto, Canada, he has a Epson EcoTank 7750, EcoTank 8550, and a 24-inch HPZ, what was it, 9... It used to be a 3200, but I don't know what the 9 plus is. And QMH1 as well. Cal Schultz says, I love your videos. Is that a big, yeah, like that? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. NPM Photo says, Jose, can the vacuum system for refill be used on Epson cars? Uh, not that I know of. No, they have too many internal um baffles and and oh my gosh it's like it's like a, a maze in there and they have diaphragms that prevent you from doing that as well um yeah no way you can do that i i i used to be able to refill some of the older uh epson cartridges but nothing new not nothing new and by new i mean like being from the the last five or six or seven even eight years ago. Um, the last set of cartridges that I was able to refill were the ones for the 2200 and the 2400. Once the 2880 came out, they changed the structure of the cartridges to prevent you from doing that. Very tricky. This cannot be refilled, okay? The ones that were able to be refilled literally had two ports here that were actually taped over at the factory. And if you just poke a, poke a little hole in that tape and insert a special adapter, you can actually refill them. Uh, those adapters are no longer available out there. 
And again, those cartridges are pretty much gone. Uh, and so are those printers. Ah, here's Rudy right here. I would be happy to develop a holder for the EP, okay, XP, XP, 15,000. Would you like to send me an empty cartridge? You will get one for free. All right, see that? Let's see who does that first. <laughs> no, I'll let you, I'll let someone else get a uh, a free cartridge uh, holder. Jerry says, "Does Mike Lee PC sell empty bottles or bottles filled with cartridge cleaning fluid?" I don't think he does. Again, like I said, getting these supplies has proved to be the biggest pain in the butt lately during the pandemic. Um, the simplest little items are just not available. And so in order to come up with a bottle like this, and even let me show you, and this heat-sealed little aluminum, that doesn't come with that bottle. He does that. He does that in his home. It's not a, it's not a shop, wise guy, okay? It's, it's his apartment, basically, or I think it's a townhouse in, in Toronto, Canada. So, yeah, no, he doesn't sell cleaning fluid that I know of. Uh, and there's so many things out there that people are using to clean printheads with that are readily available, or you can just concoct yourself. Then, yeah, he's not doing that. There's some companies that sell proprietary cleaning products, like Inkjet Mall, for instance, the PSO Flush. Very expensive, but very good. All right. Let's go back and see what else we can find here. Again, don't forget to ask questions, folks. Um, I'm just going to rely on these comments here to see if I can come up with anything to discuss. Most of the people questions here um, pertain to common problems or, or situations that I think uh, viewers that are with me only 39 today that are with me today can profit from if i can if i can read it and then you know realize oh i can help you guys with this uh, sometimes i just simply cannot uh, it's beyond my abilities hello jose i printed a nozzle check and each of my colors are shown with tiny little squares within themselves printed on regular white sheet of paper how can i print the same paper, wait a minute. How can I print this same paper from nozzle check that you did? New to printing, just got my Pro 1000. So what are you asking? Now the Pro 1000, little squares with, within themselves. Okay, let's get a Pro 1000 nozzle check. Glad I had this handy. Why are you complaining? If this is what you're getting, this is a bunch of little squares. Basically, it's just a crisscross. So I think it's misinterpreting what is what the Pro 1000 is producing for him. This is what you should get. This is not going to be a, a normal Canon uh, nozzle where it's a wide band. That wide band, even though it looks homogenous when you look at it, because most of us will print on a plain sheet of paper, which has wicking action. So what's really happening is that vertically from top to bottom of that band, that represents that whole channel. If you look at this print head, you have, you see those vertical partitions? You have two big partitions and then you have, I think it's five each little vertical lines. Well, each one of those lines is composed of a vertical row of nozzles. Nozzles meaning openings, little orifices. Don't call a channel a nozzle, okay? A nozzle is only one of the elements within the channel, that particular channel. And there may be a couple hundred of them. And so that vertical section of that band is composed of every one of the nozzles that are actively printing. And then you just print dot, 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 many little dots across the board. So it's that 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 row of nozzles 
that channel is printing little dots all the way across. Now, you need to look at that with a magnifying glass to find sometimes a, a fault might be so small that you can really detect it because of uh, ink is wicking and kind of blending together. So if you suspect that you have a problem, um, sacrifice a piece of glossy paper and print that nozzle check on it on that paper because it will have minimum amount of wicking and you should be able to detect like any area where a couple of those dots are missing because it's composed of dots okay so you say loop bright lighting and then check it with that and that should show you if anything is missing now pro 1000 is different pro 1000 boy do i have a lot of people to answer back to the pro 1000 is a different kind of nozzle uh, test. It creates crisscross, vertical, horizontal lines at the same time. A little bit more difficult to um, interpret, but basically what will happen is you will be missing some of those crosses, okay? Either a bunch of them or just a couple of random ones, and usually that's cleared up with a, a cleaning cycle. And again, remember that these more advanced Canon printers, even the Pro 100, 200, 300, Pro 10, Pro 1000, all of those, Pro 1 as well, they have uh, divided zones. Even the Pro 95,000. So it's got two zones. If a color needs a little bit of help, a channel, and it resides in the first zone, do not run a global cleaning cycle because, you know, the, the normal standard one, because that will waste ink all across the board. Only run a cleaning cycle using one of those two zones. If you have a two-zone type printhead, uh, the Pro 100 will, the Pro 10 will as well. The Pro 1 has three zones, just like the Pro 1000. So you have one two, and three, just run the color that needs help. And in this in this case, let me see. If you look at number two, this is, this is an example that I pulled because I did have, you see that photo black on the lower section? There's some little lines missing. You see that? So that required a cleaning cycle which it did automatically the next time I printed it and uh, cleared that up immediately. So that's it. Let me go back over here. Got to keep checking the questions. All right. And again, a lot of these questions have to do with settings incorrectly um, used. Um, and again, it's just knowledge that you have to basically learn. And then once you learn it, apply it. And then once you apply it, realize that, hey, this works. So why should I use some other setting, you know, setup, uh, workflow, if you will? If I now finally can produce predictable results, and by that I mean something that looks like what you edited, and it's it's then produced on paper. Don't change your workflow after that. Don't you know? Um, keep track visual. Sometimes when you turn off a or, or close a driver, and then reopen it, especially after a uh, operating system update. Um, you may end up having it default to something that you're not using, okay? That you, you actually uh, change when you begin to learn about color management. It will default to some kind of auto, you know, sRGB type workflow. No, go back and check to say, to, to make sure that everything, the way you had it before and it worked is still in the same condition. This is why QImage, it's so fabulous because it will remember every single setting, correct or wrong. It will remember whatever settings you use for every single job you produce. And it will keep a list 
of every job you produce for you. You cannot beat that. That that is unheard of. All right. So this information helped me a lot. Thank you. Uh, I was getting stripes stripes on part of my prints, but not throughout the entire image. I was originally printing direct from a Photoshop file I created, but then I saved it as a high quality JPEG and the lines went away. Okay, I don't know what you're referring to. It's a video about banding. Um, do not save um, important images to JPEG, please. You know, that's highly compressed. And the more you compress it to save drive space, the more artifacts you're going to then introduce possibly through over compression. It's called JPEGing. It looks like blotches of squares, like pixels are blended together so that you no longer have adjacent pixels that may be a slightly different hue, but it's just made into the same hue and turn into a big, weird little block of pixels that is the same exact color where it should not be. They sh every single of the pixels should have a different value. And that's what happens when you over compress. I did a demonstration one time where I uh, actually compressed a JPEG over and over until finally it just became a blob. It was totally unusable. I just don't want to go over the ones with just thanking me or whatever. Yeah. All right. I picked up a pre-owned, this is two days old, a pre-owned grade one condition, fully tested, and Nafi. Oh, I'm talking about drones. I feel you, dog. All right. I don't know who's um who this person is. Um, they always they always post lovely. Okay. I have to be um, honest with you all. I haven't really looked at this today. I just dragged myself out of the uh, bed this morning and uh, went to take my meds and uh, eat some breakfast, have some coffee. Okay. Um, <laughs> here's a good one. Typical question. We can talk about this because it's very commonly asked. Is there any model of printer, not pro level, but with decent results that you would recommend to someone who potentially would not print very often? Well, sitting right over there, the XP 15,000. I guarantee you I have not used that since I began feeling bad, and that was probably a week ago. So let's go ahead and do a nozzle check. And we can do it directly from the uh, screen. We'll see what it does, whether it does any kind of pre-cleaning or not. We're going to choose clean, print, head nozzle check, and print. We'll see. Okay, so start timing it. We'll monitor it from the chair, and uh, when it comes out, I will um, show you the results. It's already printing. We'll see if after a week of doing nothing. Here we go. Will it have any lines missing? I'm not even looking. Absolutely perfect. After a week which is something I don't recommend, but you know, circumstances beyond your control. Sometimes, you know, you end up not printing uh, like you should be. So that would be a good printer to get. Now, can they be gotten? Can they be purchased? Are they available at this point? Um, it all depends. We can, we can quickly look at Epson and see what, if they actually have one for sale. I would not, I would kind of veer away from not ordering directly from Epson because 
quite often what happens is that um, you end up with a higher price. Okay, so would that be a, we'll call it a photo printer. I don't know what the category is for those printers. Here we go. It is a photo printer. Categorized as such. All right, so here it is, and it's out of stock. You see? So if you were to just click on that and say where to buy or notify me, they kind of lead you to businesses that may have them available. And again, Dell has some uh, NM, NFM, whatever that is, has staples has them um so yeah as you can see it's it's a crazy situation we are in now and um i i i just want this to end okay i just want this to end because at this point um things like this should be available what's what components are preventing this printer from being fully manufactured and then shipped in quantities enough to satisfy the uh, buying public out there. I don't get it. So there you go. And so what you really need to do, those of you who are lucky enough to have one of these already on hand, buy yourself another set of these they're not that expensive oem okay they are really not ridiculously expensive so get a set just simply to have that second set so you can treat it as as you are doing um the pro 100 where you have a reset and refilled set of cartridges readily available and that way when when it comes time to replace say you want to if I was to weigh those cartridges right now with my lack of printing on them, they probably will weigh around 24 and a half, 25 grams. Well, that's only like two grams from full. Okay. So set up a schedule. Now, I'm not saying that a second set of cartridges is absolutely necessary. It's a, it's a luxury. Um, it just means that you have an identical gas tank already filled with gas and you swap the half empty one with the full one instantly and you and you continue driving um the same thing with printers you're just swapping from partially full condition to full condition now keep in mind that did you did you hear anything taking place any kind of uh, like maintenance taking place no now What's today? I'll tell you what. On the 1st, yeah, today's the 6th. So on the 1st, yeah, I paid my mortgage online. And I did print a little statement. So it's been about five days, okay, to tell you the truth. Not a full week. So did I use up all the ink in my cartridges? Of course not. It's barely used. And from the previous topping off experiences I've had with that printer, I've gotten to the point where, yeah, it seems to only, like even if I refill them every month, I only need to add about four ml of ink every time to most of the cartridges, depends on the color, okay? Red seems to be not used that much. Having red ink on that puppy really helps you with your color printing your color photographs and again i'm glad that they are actually categorizing that model as a color printer a, a photo printer that is that kind of puts it on a different type of pedestal you know it's not just a um uh, all-in-one do all although the only thing lacking on it is a scanner so if you had a scanner that would be that would put it under the uh all in one type category, but it would be able to print magnificent photographs. So yeah, 
I need to get back to that person. Tonight, when I have time, I will go over all of these comments and then reply, including that other guy that just doesn't quite understand how things work. Oh, wait a minute. Attention, Rudy H. I'll keep that in mind from when I might need one for my set or two OEM cartridges. Yeah. And keep those caps. Okay. Do not get rid of those, those um, exit port uh, covers. Okay. You need those. Okay. Jerry says, Jose, is there a way to keep photo paper from curling in long-term storage? as in paper only ready, rarely used. Um, yeah, the cellophane bag can seal uh, against moisture changes. Um, most papers, not so much your resin coated papers because they, it's a sheet of basic paper made out of uh, wood pulp, um, but it's coated with plastic top and bottom and then the ink recipient coat goes on top. Moisture really doesn't affect it that much, but it's those other papers that are not resin coated that are only coated, of course, on the top surface. What happens is especially, and I've experienced this with like poster board, like thin poster board that you buy at the art supplies shop. The back of the board is just plain, not colored. The top of the board has a little bit of a sheen, so it's got a coating. When air is moist, that sheen coating absorbs water. It expands. It causes the paper to curl away from the... In other words, this is the top. It will curl this way. When air is very, very dry, it will contract because it loses the moisture and of course causes that coating to shrink which forces the fibers to curl in the opposite direction other than sealing it completely from air you know i would put it in the original box that came in or if it's a pack leave it in the pack uh, a lot of times they add a sheet of cardboard to it um, if you do not if you have access to nice pristine sheets of cardboard. Sometimes when you buy um, put together type furniture where you put it together yourself, it'll come with all kinds of, you know, packing material, cut something that will fit inside that box and keep that paper pressed flat. Um, that's all you can do. There's really not much you can do for curling, uh, especially uh, non resin coated type papers. So the art papers are, are the, the worst. They will cur the, curl the most. Luminical from South Florida, sunny uh, South Florida, by the way. Pro 100 OEM inks, Red River Palo Duro Barita, fiber 300 paper, awesome stuff. Very good. Richard Bender, Cloudy Hagerstown today using the R3000 Ink Owl and QMH Ultima. I have to do a lot of printing this week, so let's see what the nozzle check says. Uh, you asked me for my address, didn't you? And uh, that's when I was feeling at my worst. So I did not answer you back. But what is it that you wanted to do? Did you want to um, send me something or, or what? Because, yeah, that is still my address. The one that you um, wrote to me about. Luminical says, printers that are not the only items missing from the marketplace. I've been trying to buy Moab Juniper Burrito Fiber 305 for months now with no luck. Yeah, it's just so many things. Um, I mean, think about just like what would cost these caps, these caps right here, this from not being available. The bottles can be bought, but without the caps. He's got to buy caps and bottles and then the the heat sealing aluminum tape material that's a separate item so in order to come up with this whole unit of course including the inks as well 
and also the labeling, which I think is just Avery type labels that he just prints on probably his e EcoTanks uh, printer or the Canon uh, printer. These caps are available. So why aren't the other ones available? This is a lot more intricate than just a normal, regular old cap. Now, one thing I have to show you guys. Let me see if it's... Some of these caps have an internal ring. You see that? And that is meant to receive an O-ring. An O-ring that you insert in place. And that supposedly gives you a perfect seal. Because think of what you're doing here. Now, these caps are sealing very well. I'm going to put my thumb on the... And look. Very good seal. You see that? If I put water in here and flip it upside down on a bright pressure, you'll get no leaks. Some of the caps that were being sold were not manufactured correctly to the proper dimensions and were causing leaks. We're ticking off a bunch of people, okay? And there were ways to um, take care of that problem by properly installing an O-ring that was provided to you as well. But quite often what would happen is the uh, O-ring was either omitted by the user or installed improperly so that it was skewed and not really sealing. And so, of course, you're going to get ink all over yourself. Don't blame anybody but yourself when that happens. Why do I say that? Because I did that as well. So XP 15,000 in stock at b and awesome. So see, that's what you got to do. Sometimes the actual provider, whether it's Canon or, or Epson, um, makes it more of a probability for you to get a particular printer at a, at a third party type business um i think it's you know they're still selling them they're not selling them at at the retail price but they're selling them of course at cost or not cost but you know wholesale but they are actually favoring uh, some of these camera companies and other type re, um, basic you know related type businesses like the uh um office supply homes, uh, I mean, houses and uh, companies like uh, Micro Center or, again, the big box companies. And sometimes what you find there is just some of the lower end printers. You're not going to find a Pro 1000 at, at Walmart, let's just say. But you'll find printers there. You know, you will find some printers there. But wow, it is crazy. Art is here, West Tennessee. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Art, if you, uh, those of you who arrived late, I am being treated for a very bad bladder infection. I am in a great deal of discomfort right now. And so I will try to stick with this. Uh, we've been on for about an hour, just a little over an hour. And uh, we'll see how far we can get along. But anyway, so hopefully by... Next week, with the treatment of antibiotics, I'll be feeling a little bit better. Okay, great video. This is concerning. Um, I, I took people through a tour of the Pro 1000 printer screen because there are some items there that are a little bit difficult to understand and comprehend what they are even talking about. So I took... A little bit of time and showed everybody the different uh, options that you have access to. This guy Joe T says, uh, "Great video. Guess I have some of some changes to make on my Pro 1000. It turns itself off after a bit of time. I was researching if I should do this. If I want to use Key Image Schedule Maintenance, yeah, you cannot have your your printer turn off because then what it'll do 
uh, it'll probably run a cleaning cycle if it thinks that it's been, you know, off. In other words, if it powers completely off, which is, is one of the options, you're going to have to manually turn it on. So are you going to be available at 3 a.m. in the morning if that's when you set your schedule to occur, especially with QImage? You can set it to whatever time of day, but, you know, if you have your printer set to power off, it's going to remain off. It doesn't, it doesn't magically turn itself on. You have to actually press the button. So in the maintenance tab under the power options, there's a way to um, take care of that. Let me, you can do that from your screen on the printer itself. Let me find that a second here. Control panel. We'll go over to the Pro 1000 driver. And I'll walk you th guys through what you got to do with this baby to have it always on. One, one second. I'm just going to overlay the uh, comment section here. So... You go to maintenance, and if you look on the right side, you will have some power off. This is actually for you to power off your printer from your computer desk. So the printer might be in another room. You want to power it off. If you choose to do so, by all means, do so. Um, again, the warning is that and when you power off, it's going to run a cleaning cycle, probably unnecessarily. Okay. Auto power. So you click on this. And then you get this option right here. And I have it set to disable. The normal option would be enable. So what happens is that you either let it power off after a certain amount of non-use. So if, for instance, for, say, four hours you don't use it, it's going to power it off. After two hours, after one hour, half an hour, 15 minutes, no, disable. Disable both of those functions because you want your printer to stay on, okay? Don't be afraid that it's going to then increase your electric bill. It's not, believe me, maybe by 50 cents, okay? So don't worry about that. Are there any other areas here that I myself personally use? I use quiet settings. Why do I do that? What does quiet setting actually mean? And notice I have it set to always use quiet settings, okay? So I'm going to apply those settings and leave that. So let me go back to me. So what does that mean? Is it really quieter as far as decibels levels? I don't know. I haven't measured. I do have a decibel meter. I, one of these days, I'm going to set both modes and, and measure it. But what it is, it just basically runs slower. It will pause after each pass a little bit longer. And why is that important or useless? Well, it's important because it allows the print head to not get as hot as it normally would. If you have absolutely perfect ink flow as expected by the factory uh, settings, then your operating temperature of the printhead will remain at the proper level. It's like, your, it's like your operating temperature in your automobile. So if your water pump is not pumping enough coolant through the engine block and then extracting the heat with the fan, in the front of your radiator, then your operating temperature is going to be higher. Too high, you'll begin to overheat. Well, overheating is absolutely a condition you do not want on a thermal printhead printer, like a Canon printer. Uh, you want to maintain the proper temperature. So to help it, assuming, of course, that my cartridges 
they are all refilled by me, are providing the proper rate of ink flow. And that proper rate of ink flow is reaching my printhead during its print job, back and forth. Those little nozzles are working the little butts off, firing, firing, firing millions of dots of ink for every print. You want any heat that's generated to be immediately cooled down by what? By the next flow of ink that's entering that little tiny microscopic compartment. It's as if I took a, a little frying pan, held it over the fire, took it out, let it cool a second. Held it over a fire for two seconds. Let it cool for one second. Rather than hold it over the fire for two seconds and then only a quarter of a second cool down. Eventually, that pan is going to get too hot. But by having a longer cool down, meaning the printhead just printed a set of dots. It went to the left. It'll pause there for a fraction of a second. That's all it needs. And then it prints again. and cools down again for another fraction of a second and it's just printing a little bit slower also the rate of laying down those dots is reduced the negative of course if you're in a hurry tough luck it's going to take longer to print but i'm never on a hurry i print and however long it takes i don't care it's none of my concern i'm not meeting any deadlines i i could care less about that aspect i just want my print head to be uh, maintain as healthy condition as possible. And so using that quiet mode does help it in a in a little bit of a, in a way, I guess you can say, because it just, if you're printing, 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 yeah, it's going to get hot. It's just you're, you're firing those nozzles faster. And the faster you're firing, each nozzle needs a specific level of heat applied to that droplet of ink so that it reaches a specific temperature and it is ejected. So the more shots you fire a machine gun nonstop, the more that machine gun will heat up. If you fire at a low rate, the machine gun will not heat up. You see, it's as simple as that. Yes, I know. And, um, you know, progress is there I, I can feel the difference and uh, definitely hope that it will not be too much too many more days like this all right me too my friend jerry says my cost pcse four ounce eight x refill ink resetter blah 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 costs about 210 dollars USD gives about nine refills, costs about $3 per cart versus $17. Actually, yeah, that's if you include the cost of everything, including, you know, the accessories. But the reality is, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. So if you were to, say, fill this baby right here that is absolutely dead dry, nothing in it but it's not modified. You see that? As opposed to this, which is modified, there's a difference in cost. Let's check out what an ink bottle, let's see what, let's see what PC is selling here. Of course, it helps if I would spell it correctly. Okay. So let's talk about Canon. So Canon 8 tank. Let me move that over there a sec. 8 tank, uh, 42. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do this one better. Oh, gosh. I screwed up. Let me find a second tab here. Precision colors. 
Let's look at the 200. See what that would cost to refill, okay? So let's just look at bulkings. Let's assume that you've used up all your inks. Let's not even include the price of the resetter or accessory, any of that, just the cost of ink. That would be the best, more ac you know, most accurate way to figure out how much it would cost. I think I already got my money back from these this unit here. And of course, the other thing you get is this bottle with the uh, needles, all of that. After one cycle, you suppose the ink you purchase, let's just call that even. And now we're just going to talk about the cost of actual ink. So we will go to bulk inks. So let's see. Uh, Four ounces. So four ounces of ink is eleven dollars. Now, let's look at how many ml four ounces make. Okay, so I'm just gonna go four ounce to milliliters. It's one hundred and eighteen ml. Okay, so we have 118 ml to work with. I'm gonna get my calculator set up. We'll pop that over here, all right? So we have 118. So when you refill, whether you're using the vacuum method or the modified cartridge method, you're gonna be using a drastically different amount of ink to top off or refill a cartridge. So think about this. If you have a modified cartridge already, the procedure that we always universally recommend is to never let your cartridge go empty here, okay? So what does that mean? If this cartridge holds and I'm just going to guess out of the top of my head, 14 ml of ink. Let's just say 14 ml. How much ink is actually in here before the liquid chamber is allowed to go empty? In other words, I still have a little bit of ink at the bottom. I have found out that it takes about 7 milliliters of ink to fill this chamber. That's maximum. That's with this sponge already being fully saturated to begin with. I can add only about 7 ml. So let's just look at what's the price per ml. So we have $11. 11 point and divide by, what was it, 118. So we're talking about nine cents, 9.3 cents. Okay, so we will enter that point zero nine. Was that correct? Nine cents? Yeah, 9.3 cents. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. What am I doing wrong? Dot zero nine. That's how much one milliliter of ink costs. So times seven. 65 cents per refill. Okay. When you are refilling a modified cartridge, assuming that you're using the proper uh, refilling mm -hmm. procedure, which means you are not allowing this chamber to go empty. Even if it was 8 ml of ink, which I don't think it is, it would be another 9, so 60, 74 cents. Call it three, three quarters <laughs> of a dollar to refill your cartridge. Now, let's go ahead and assume that we are now using an untampered cartridge and we're going to vacuum fill it. 
and we allowed the cartridge to go empty. What does that mean? That after the liquid chamber lost all its ink, it triggers a low warning because underneath here is a prism. Now that prism is not available on the Pro 200 cartridges. Bear that in mind. The Pro 200, somehow they figured out that that's not really necessary. I prefer this prism to help me or to help itself determine when the low warning should take place, okay? Because once that is triggered, then it's a simple matter of keeping track of the volume of droplets post that event, the low warning, so that the five milliliters that are left here are never allowed to go down to be say below three. That's when the cartridge is declared empty. You still have about three ml of ink living inside those fibers. True, there's air in there now, okay? But like I said, that does not matter when you are vacuum filling. So how much ink are we going to be able to get in? So say the max, maximum factory fill is 14. Subtract 3. That's about 11. That's why on the pre-filled chamber of that setup that Rudy has made for us, it's not here anymore. I have it ready to be demonstrated over there. You're going to add about 10 to 11 ml of ink. That's all you really need. Let your... Chip go empty, take out the cartridge, reset it, pop it into the unit, add 10 to 11 ml, proceed with the vacuum filling process, and you will have a factory fill again. Okay, as, as close to a factory fill as you can imagine. So let's figure out what the cost of that new way of doing things would be. So 0.093 times let's we'll just go with 11. oh i forgot to switch over let's just go to 11 and equal it will cost you a buck a buck uh, and two cents one dollar and two cents to refill your cartridge wow okay uh so that is not a bad deal either way either way depending how you refill of course, the other way, you're going to be filling a little bit more often because you're only allowing the 7 or 8 ml of ink that lives in the liquid chamber to be used, and then you refill immediately. If you're never going to disperse that air by using vacuum, then it, it, you know, it, it depends on you to make sure that you always top off the cartridge before any air gets into the sponge. So during the normal operating procedure of that cartridge, this sponge is always maintained at the proper temp condition. You see that there's a little bit of a bubble on the top and that's where you should have, you should have a little bit of air left on the top. And look at the liquid chamber here. It's about 80%, maybe a little bit more from full. You don't want it to overfill either. So that should answer that question. Now, if you include, like, you know, like, like Jerry did here, if you include all of the original costs of the resetter, accessories and everything, in other words, the complete kit, and yeah, it will, it will then, you know, cost you $3 per cart, which is still, you know, a ton less than $17 per unit if you buy, always buy um, OEM. And I think that's, did you include the resetter in that calculation? I was, I was, I was going to, but, you know, just wondering if you did or not. M MJP Gadget, Michael from Burnaby, British Columbia, Canon Pro 1, Pro 10, Pro 1000, OEM PC colors, OEM from PC colors, and 
for the Pro 1000. Oh, you're using OEM. Great. Thank you for all your advice. I hope you're feeling better soon. Yep, we'll see. If I do feel good, and by Wednesday, I will be doing that demo for you all to watch. And uh, you, all can, you can also literally flush a cartridge. This one here. Let me see. This is untampered. I flushed it. It was black. Okay. I flushed it using that method. And I air dried it, just leaving it in this orientation. I put it right on top of my scale. And every day I would check it. And it took about it took about three days to dry to 13.6 grams. So this is ready, ready for refilling. But I'm going to go ahead and do a unflushed one to see the difference in the amount of ink required now remember because this has been flushed and i'm starting with a sponge with a without a bit of ink in it it's going to probably require like 13 14 grams of ink to be loaded in the chamber first so if you are working from a cartridge that just got declared empty you probably still have three ml in here so you would have to subtract that and only add about 10 to 11 ml to the chamber because that's that's all you're going to be able to load and during the process you probably will get ink in the vent but the second that you disconnect the system that will be drawn out in you will have a clean nothing but air in that vent so then the cartridge should be able to flow perfectly well Okay, let's see what else we got here. So we will close down PC. And we are at about an hour and a half. Wow, I didn't think I was going to last that long. We got 40 people on board. Don't forget to like if you are enjoying what we are presenting here. And if not, then fine. I can live with that as well. Not a problem. But it does help the channel, folks. All right, I uh, do daily nozzle checks in my shop on my Epson L 1800 A3 plus printer and keep bad prints away. Yeah, it's as simple as that. If you are in an actual shop, then make that as part of your daily maintenance. Uh, if you don't have any jobs to print, print a nozzle check. At least you're putting ink on paper for a productive uh, reason. And not, you know, just wasting ink on a cleaning cycle because you ignored your printer and you did not print. And now you have a slight clog that the only way to clear it is with a cleaning cycle. Now, here's what happens, folks. When you, I guess you get to be well known, people start to scam you or spam you. So what we do and what you're able to do is go here to the action menu and hide user from channel. So I don't want to just remove it. I want to hide this person. So he will never be able to um, post again. See you. It's, it's rough justice. Yeah. All right. I really appreciate all the work you've done over the years, especially regarding the Pro 1000. I'm a disabled veteran with a photography business, and I was provided. Oh, that's a long one. I was provided with a by the VA with a Pro 1000 printer. Wow. Gee, after using it only a few times, I noticed the issue that seems to prevail on your site. Reference ink, ink levels, ink waste, and various other ink issues was a big issue. Was a big issue. Aside from the fact that Canon has an extremely hard time providing M MC20 waste cartridges, I recently ordered two but I only got one as well as the expense of the ink cartridge. I'm wondering whether having this printer is a cost efficient place. Yeah. I read this earlier and he's asking about precision colors as well. It, it's, it really is not a, a, and he got this for free. So uh, I cannot say otherwise. 
but it's really not a printer for the casual user. You just cannot, you cannot deal with something um, that requires not only a lot of attention, but a lot of use to keep it happy. Okay. It's, 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 it's almost as if it was alive. It just needs to be treated nicely. <laughs> it's, it needs to be used. You need to, you need to tell it how wonderful you are every day. Okay. It's, uh, I'm joking, but you know, uh, a level of printer like that needs to be used. Now, from what I have heard, the higher level printers, 2100, that used to be the 2000, 2100 that utilize those larger cartridges uh, are, it's a little bit different because what happens is that these feed into the ink delivery system horizontally. And they rely on very mild um, what do you, what do you call it? Um geez. The ink actually just flows, you know, it, there's no force behind it. So it's it's gravity. Sorry. See, my brain is, is shot today. Gra gravity feeding system. And if it was Feeding in this orientation probably would not require uh, the what seems to be really intricate in by some other explanation, maybe, you know, over maintenance, you know, more maintenance than it really requires. Those other printers, their cartridges fit vertically. So I think they're by virtual of their you know position ink flow is improved. I don't think they could have introduced or uh, uh, designed a desktop printer to be vertically um, fed, in other words. Um, but that may have uh, changed the way that these printers maintain themselves. 2100, I think there's a few folks out there that have them. Uh, even larger ones, and they always state that, hey, I don't see or experience all of this horror that Pro 1000 users are, you know, describing out there. So that may be a factor. So for those of you who are thinking about printing big and choose to go with those bigger printers, I think you'll be happily uh, surprised to find out that they are not as bad as the Pro 1000 in regards to the maintenance that it needs to uh, run. Those cartridges can also be modified. You can also disable ink monitoring at the end and um, you can continue to refill those cartridges. And when you have 700 milliliters of uh, ink you just installed, you can print, believe me, you can print forever especially if you're not, you should not be, but especially if you're not a, a, a uh, frequent uh, user. Now, for those of you who are encountering or thinking about going that route with a Canon printer, uh, one of the you know higher level printers like the 1000 and up, and you want to go ahead and sort of get into a chipless type condition, don't forget that there is a, a specific method of doing this that you have to perform. And I think there's a difference between printers like the Pro 10, the Pro 300, Pro 100, Pro 200. Those cartridges ride on the printheads. The other family of printers have stationary cartridges. And I think that may be the reason for the slightly different process that you must use to disable a chip, okay? With the Pro 1000, which is the one that I'm working with, now I have to do this a certain way. I cannot, I, I, I stress, I cannot allow my cartridge to go empty the natural way. In other words, see the Pro 1000 will literally empty your cartridge and bingo the chip goes red x if i try to refill that 
cartridge at that point, it might not ever allow me to, you know, do the actual uh, chip um, replace, not replacement, but disabling. It will give me a, you ran out of rank, sorry, fellow, you got to put a new cartridge in, you see. The error number is 1552. When you do it this other way, and that means that before the cartridge is empty, say it is low, you drill a hole, you top off the cartridge to full 112 weight grams, put it in. It will still be read as low, but at some point, it will reach empty. At that point, you can just continue printing magically. You can actually remove it and, you know, just top it back up again to 112 weight. Or drill the hole before it reaches low, top it off, put it back in. It will reach low at some point. Nothing to do with the ink level. You topped it off and will stay at low seemingly forever. At some point, you might be running a job and it runs a cleaning cycle and boom, you get a print error. Restart your printer, don't panic. When it restarts again, that cartridge that was low for a very long time will now say, hey, no more ink. Well, press the pause button, five seconds, you will see processing across the screen. And that means that once it is done with that so-called processing, that chip now is officially disabled. The printer is not disabled, just the chip. If you ever get tired of it, having to then systematically top off your cartridges to make sure they always have ink in them, then go ahead and replace it with a new set of cartridges, you know, OEM, untampered. And you'll be back to regular ink monitoring like new again. But for me, I'm running the sensors attached to the print uh, cartridge front. And those sensors keep track of my internal ink levels. Okay. And what they do is that at the point where the cartridge has about 20% ink left, it will trigger and the light will come on. The sensor will, light will go off and the light on my panel, because it's a double system, will go on. So when the light on the panel is off and the sensor light is on, you have sufficient amount of ink. When the opposite happens, meaning that the sensor goes off and the light on the panel corresponding to that particular position, one through 12, lights up that means that cartridge which now has the sensor off requires to be filled how much ink well when i did mine it was declared 32 is empty so it was around 53 grams of ink of, of total weight i should say so that's about 20 percent and a hair so then I added enough ink to bring it up to 212 grams, put the plug back in and put the sensor back on it because I wanted to weigh it. And that's the reason I took the sensor off. But you can safely add like 55 to 60 ml of ink from a syringe and carefully watch for a possible overflow. You don't want that to happen over your table. So you do that with your sensor attached, insert it back in place, Make sure you remove the door fuller, the sensor door fuller, because how would you possibly remove a cartridge and reinsert it with the door closed? You have to open the door, remove the cartridge, do whatever you're going to do, put it back in, and close the door. Well, the door is always open, so you fool it by inserting a little sensor fuller, basically. And that tells the sensor, hey, your sensor is now blocked. Therefore, the door must be closed. It's not really closed. We know it's open all the time. So you have to run this. Do not remove cartridges 
without first removing the sensor footer. Okay, because you have to you have to show to the printer that the door has been opened when it's really been open all the time. You see what I'm saying? So we have not tested to see if anything will harm this process that we're using if you do not fool it properly. We have not tested that. So, but it's, it's just easier to just process, you know, follow the process and don't try to cheat your way through it. You know, um, that's the same, the same thing with any other refilling process that Ken or, or, or Epson don't want us to do. Okay, you have to follow the process that has been established by trial and error by many people. Let me see what else we got here. MJP Gadget, British Columbia, Canon Pro 1, Pro 10, Pro 1000, OEM PC colors. Oh, okay, I did, I did you already, sorry. Capillary action, so what are we referring to here? What is this in reference to? I don't know. Please refresh my mind. Tell me what you're referring to. D-O-R-P-V. Okay, you probably had this question a million times, but has but what's a decent matte paper on an extremely tight budget? I'm using old Canon. 9500 Mark II. Surprisingly, where are you? Where are you located? First of all, tell me, like right now, where you're located, and I will give you a a good source for matte paper. Okay, and surprisingly enough, it's one that I just recently tested. Too many things here. Ireland. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to give you a U.S. local source, but um, if you have like office supply stores in the U.S., we have several companies that are dedicated for supplies for an office whether it's a you know personal office or professional office. Often, not only do they sell regular bond paper and all kinds of different papers for laser printers and such, but they will usually sell a house brand, brand house brand, a house brand of photo paper. Look at their matte paper. This is this is Epson, not Epson. This is paper from a company called Staples here in the US. This is marvelous, okay? This was printed on their particular matte paper. Of course, I made a, a profile for it, and I printed it on the, um, what was it, the uh, Pro 1000. So I made a profile first, and then I proceeded to print this. It's, it's as good as you can get, okay? As good as you can get. When I made the profile, I used the, um, regular matte paper choice, and I told it to disable margin detection. So to allow me, because it gets, it thinks you want to print on a um, fine art type system uh, or settings, which imposes a big border on the trailing edge and leading edge. But yeah, look for office supplies uh, stores. Uh, you must have them in Ireland. And then see if they house a like a house brand type paper. Usually they will have like one glossy paper and one matte paper. And a lot of times they're made in Germany, so they're not like you know run of the mill 
uh, papers, but they will be at a much lower cost than, say, buying from a real, you know, inkjet, inkjet paper uh, companies, okay? Uh, Canon paper is not bad, the Pro, Pro Mat. It's as good as that is, and vice, vice versa. They're very good quality. Yeah, you sure do. Uh, you sure do. But often, just your normal um, matte paper setting on your 9500 Mark II will, will, will suffice. So in your case, if I recall correctly, and this is kind of a strange situation with Canon papers, they have matte black and they have photo black on their driver settings and i'll show you i don't have the 9500 uh, installed because mine is dead but i'll open up the pro 10 and i'll show you what i'm referring to here let's go ahead and go back to the screen so if i choose matte photo paper Normally, and let's put this on photo. See what I mean? That's a default setting. Standard. Standard means a document with some possible graphic. Just set it to photo. You're going to be printing photos. And we'll remove borderless. We're not going to be doing that. We'll go back to, you see how things change? I had it on borderless. Change it to a platinum N. Let's go back to matte. And we'll just use high quality. And of course, back to this, uh, setting it all back again, because it will change every time. That's why I see, I keep saying, keep track. We're going to click on this. This is on Windows, of course, uh, matching in ICM or driver matching. What that is doing, since I am using... In this case, I am telling the printer that I am using Canon Pro Matte Paper or Matte Photo Paper. It's going to link that job that I'm going to be printing to the correct ICC profile, the Canon ICC profile for Matte Photo Paper. But we're using some other paper that is also matte. We're hoping that it's going to be close enough. But when you do that, that means that the driver itself is going to control color. Try that at first just to see, okay? Now, if you're on the 9500 Mark II and you're using Canon photo matte paper, then it's going to be a perfect match, okay? So the only problem is this, and this is crazy. It's not going to print with matte photo. It's not, I'm sorry. It's not going to print with matte black ink. Don't ask me why. It's not. It's going to use photo black, which will not result on a very deep black. You're not going to have this result. You're going to have a slightly lighter shade of your deep tones. So the only way to print with actual matte black on some of these earlier uh, Canon printers including the Pro 10, it's the same situation, is to instead use a fine art paper, photo paper, Pro Premium matte. But then you get this. Paper resource tray is not available for the selected media type. So I'm trying to print on the rear tray. I'm going to have to use the manual feeder. Okay. And with the manual feeder and that paper, I may go ahead and get a restriction on the borders. I may have to accept a pretty wide leading edge and trailing edge border. If you're printing on big size papers, that may not be an issue. But I don't want to lose like 35 milliliters. I mean, what am I saying? 35 millimeters of front and back edge because it wants to apply a border. 
It, it wants to do that because it doesn't want to have any artifacts created by using a manual feeder. You know, it could happen. So it's, it's quite a restriction when you really look at it that way. So if I was to go ahead and choose that, look at the, it's going to probably force me to use one of these down here, letter size with a paper margin of 30 milli, millimeters, right there. It's gonna probably automatically switch your job to that. It might. I don't have a 9500 Mark II with me, but that's what happens normally when you print on the Pro 10 and you use fine art paper in order to be able to use matte black ink. It's really, really crazy. The Pro 1000 does not have that problem. If you choose your normal matte uh, media, it will, it will use matte ink, okay, and not the photo ink. Okay, here's one thing I want you all to remember. Let me go back to this. I get a lot of questions about like non-photo printers, especially other brands. Here's one about the XP 310. I have no way to answer you. Why? I don't have that printer. Okay, I don't have that printer and I don't plan to get that printer. I have to sort of minimize the printers that I, I'm willing to have here to models that are going to be basically only used for photo printing. And that XP model, I don't believe is um, categorized as a, as a um, photo printer. So again, when an error that it's only, um, specific to a particular model that is more say intended for like office use or like all-in-one type use yes they can print photos of course but they actually do many other functions um you will have to kind of look up that error yourself all you have to do often is just google it under that printer model's name and make and then the number and then the word error and you will often find an explanation of that error. Also, much of the advice, this is an ancient video right here, right there, uh, six years ago. And there are some papers out there where that is like almost impossible to determine which side is the printable side which side is actually coated with an inkjet ink jet receptive coating because the back looks the same some papers will have like a watermark on the back and you can tell immediately that you're not supposed to print on that side but some papers is really tricky and i've done it i have made that error and wonder hey why does it look so mottled you know it doesn't look smooth, it looks weird. And so when I check, it's always the, the fact that I printed on the wrong side. Here's what you do. Now this matte paper is very, very similar on, by, on the back. The back just looks a little bit duller, not as white, whereas this side looks a lot whiter. But if you still are unsure, wet your two fingers, squeeze, let go. It didn't work. There you go. This side sticks a little bit better. And quite often, depending on the type of coating, the back may be coating with some kind of sizing. And so, so that that test doesn't work 100% of the time. On papers that are just plain rag art type papers, where you know it, it's only definitely coated on the front and nothing on the back, it will stick. If you want to just lick your fingers, use a sponge, wet your fingers, and then apply the grip, and it should stick on the printable side. Now, if the paper is double coated, then it's going to stick on both, both sides equally. So 
by that point, it's going to you know allow you to probably print on both sides. That's what those double coated papers are for. All right, let's see what else we got here. Empty, the sorry, the cards being empties. You probably have a question. Okay. Uh, Dude, I, I I still don't know what you're asking. Are you are you referring to the vacuum filling method? We're looking for the word for horizontal card being empty. So I said capillary reaction. Okay. It yeah, it, it could be that, um, but it's more um sort of like a gravity feeding because the bottom slants, you see how it slants and the port, you see the port. Exit port is way down here. So at the lowest level of the cartridge body, the body is held in this position, okay? And so the last bits of ink literally just flow. The internal surface of this cartridge sort of repels ink. It's, it's quite cool to see. Um, and so it's like, it's like, um, it's like water over oil. It just, you know, does not stick. So it has a bit, the ability to really flow well into the uh, ink delivery system and make use of all of the ink inside your cartridge. That way, uh, when you, when it is empty, you know you got your money's worth. Well, maybe. You might agree or not. <laughs> Yeah, that could be it. It's it's really something I discovered after a long time using my 9500. I was like, why am I getting such really lousy matte paper results? And somebody explained that to me. That's what was happening. Somebody's talking about, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at this. Can I remove, can I download and remove the XPS driver later after the complete setup? Yeah, why would you load the XPS driver to begin with? Just download your regular driver. The SPS driver, even though it looks like a second driver, is really just using the first driver and disguising itself as a second driver. And all that does is what QImage already does for you. Uh, it basically, by using a special dithering system, it is simulating 16-bit printing. How do I set up a custom profile or get a custom profile? Oh boy. Well, you create a profile. You print a profile chart and it depends how many colors you want to include your software. Once you, once you install one of these units, its software will be able to generate uh, different levels of um, patches on one chart. Either it'll, it'll be one chart, two sheets, three sheets in any number of, of colors. The more colors you have, the less guesswork or interpolation uh, the software needs to uh, perform in order to figure out. See, these are all scattered colors. If you were to line these up by hue, by color and by hue and by density, then you would see that two adjacent colors of the same family, let's just say, 
are not quite, you know, there's something in between. There should be something in between them. So that difference between those two shades is what the software will then interpolate and guess. There should be 20 more shades between those two, you know, whatever. And so you print this using no color management on your driver. And if you print through one of the spectral photometers software, this will be created in raw condition. In other words, the chart, the image itself does not reside or live in any particular color space. It will be printed on your printer with zero color management. You set that yourself manually, unless you're using a Mac. And so once you produce this print, you let it dry to make sure there's no color changes to those patches as the liquid portion of that ink evaporates. Once it is dry, you scan it. You go back to your software and you ask it to scan. You calibrate your scanner and now you're ready to proceed. And you begin to scan from left to right, very slow rate. The scanner, the light, the light that actually senses and reflects back that color, it reads that particular color, 200 pulses per second. So the slower you go, the more pulses will be, say, dedicated to one particular patch. If you go very fast, fast across at only a few pulses, so the more samplings that you get out of one patch, the more accurate the result for that particular patch will be. In other words, if it was supposed to be a certain value, but it's reproduced slightly different, it will correct that. So the more pulses, the more samplings you get, it's like going to, say, a lake and you're sampling the water. The more water samples you get throughout that whole lake shore or even in the center of the lake, the more accurate your water results will be. You're testing, whatever you're testing. So this little purple patch, say a scan 20 times as I go across it. That'll be 20 samplings. This paper has a slight texture. That color is not absolutely even across that little square patch. It's going to differ slightly. So you want to get as many of those little mini pulses or mini samplings, okay, as you go across. That will then end up giving you the most accurate profile. So you scan, you scan, you scan, you scan, you scan. How many are here? 400 patches. So you got 400 samples, say, at 10 samplings per patch. That would be 4,000, okay? The equivalent of 4,000. So it will then determine if any of those patches were reproduced correctly by the printer, are they the same value as the original color that was generated by the software? Of course not. It will then make corrections across the board. Every one of those results will be corrected. The interpolation will be created and you end up with a profile. What does that mean? Then, then the next time you use that same paper, using the same paper choice on your driver, no color management, and you then finalize that profile and you save it. It will go to wherever, wherever your profiles live in your hard drive and will be made accessible later. He's wondering, what do, you, what do I do with the profile? He obviously doesn't really understand the process. It happens to all of us. That's how we start up. So that profile will go to the appropriate location and then your printing application will locate it for you, okay? In QImage, you just basically go to the profile section and look for it. There's also a way to do a quick look. Well, it will sort of kind of find it for you, okay? And you load it. So the driver is set to no color management and then the printing application will control color through what? Through that new profile you created. Your results should be fantastic, as best as your printer can produce. Okay, if you are still unsatisfied, there's really not much I can say, you know, because by performing that, 
you will be allowing your printer to work at its maximum output quality. Simple. All right. Let's see. It's 3.30. I think we're going to call it pretty soon. I got to. I got to go upstairs and relax a little bit. Oh. So let's see who else we got here. Again, you know, zap me with any questions you have. Ah, I need more drink. Mm. Don't let me sit here. Ask, ask away, please. Thank you for all the advice. I was wondering why I was losing a lot of, yeah. That's the reason. It's really weird. I did use the photo rag profile for some watercolor paper. Does that use matte black ink? If it's a matte paper, then, you know, if it's a, a paper that is not shiny, it will then trigger that uh, other black. It should, anyway, automatically. That's not saying it, it works every single time, but it should. It really should. Let's look at Facebook and see if we have anything good to uh, discuss here. So let me go ahead. This is new activity. Let me see if we got anything actually new, newer since we began. We'll refresh the page. Yes, we do. Okay, so hi, everyone, or hey, everyone. Just wanted to follow up on a question I posted a while ago about sending a printer from Sydney, Australia, back home to Ireland. Finally, I have set up everything almost six months later, and voila, the printer knocked out a flawless nozzle check. Delighted. There you go. See that? Canon printers are fantastic, okay? And realize that how long did this take? Did it go by air? Did it go by boat? Uh, I mean, you know, it depends. So that that's amazing. You can tell that everything is perfect here. You see the big vertical band. So from top to bottom, that represents one of those rows of nozzles in that channel. And every one of those nozzles are firing simultaneously across creating that one inch wide band okay same thing with all of the other ones so you would print this you know you print it just one time just to see um kind of enlighten yourself uh you print on a glossy paper and then take a little hand loop and, and look at it and you will see the little individual dots each little line represents many dots fired by one nozzle and then underneath will be the next nozzle underneath the next one and so on the chroma optimizer is really represented by one of these. I think it's gray. Gray is applied over, you know, throughout, and then a layer of chroma optimizer is applied. In this case, it's just print, 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 stop. Print, stop. So you get two vertical wide bands of chroma optimizer and what that does it kind of darkens the results chroma optimizer will make colors appear deeper and brighter okay and so that is a perfect nozzle check wonderful congratulations reliable place to buy a print hit well there are a few sites online i have one that i used to use on my pro one i've gone through four print hits on that that baby and um here's what happened to the last one it kind of exploded yeah <laughs> that was not fun by the way and lucky i had a spare so ebay you know go to ebay and uh, as long as the, they come in a box like this, here, let's open that up. But check out that price, Pro 100. Now, if you recall, not you, not you Europeans, but us lucky Americans, <laughs> we were able to get these printers for $100. 
after rebate. Quite often, uh, we have something locally called, um, what is it called? Jeez. Where people locally sell stuff and you just kind of meet them in a neutral location and uh, exchange the money right there. But anyway, I have bought uh, several of these printers. I have three right now, and I don't think I ever paid more than $115 for any of them. So there you go. More than I paid twice almost what I paid for a printer. That would have bought me two printers complete. And you're just buying the print hit. But anyway, as long as they have absolute proof that this comes in a sealed package, then yeah, just buy it. Just buy it because you're going to need it. Now, if it comes in this condition, no. Refurbish. Absolutely. Avoid like, like the plague. Okay. You can't refurbish Canon printheads. Where are these people coming across with this? You cannot. Printheads for Canon printers wear out. They wear out. They cannot be rejuvenated in any way, shape, or form. So don't fall for this. Okay? Do not. I wouldn't choose any of these right here. Unless they come in a box sealed. That one is not sealed. I wouldn't trust that as far as I could throw an elephant. Okay. That is not a real uh, sealed brand spanking new print hit. I went blank here. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, do not fall for that, folks. It's it's not. Oh yeah, yeah. Share screen again. Da -da 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 -da. See what I mean, folks? I am not myself today. All right. So yeah, do not fall for that. It's not going to be real. It's going to be fake. So don't spend your hard-earned money for that. Now, this one here, and again, you know, I don't know what these, you know, for these, what these uh, print hits are for, for what models. None of these, none of these you should even consider buying. Something in a box, yes. That would be the only one. So this is IP8500, Pro 9000. If you have a Pro 9000, I do. Huh, $93. Hmm. But I don't want to revive my Pro 9000. Again, all of these right here are for Canon printers. And they, not this one. Not this one. Only this one and this one. Do not buy anything that. Even if it comes in a box, that is not a sealed printhead. So as you can see, there's a lot of ways to lose your money out there. So don't consider that. Only if they promise and they actually show and prove that they are selling you a proper original sealed in its original aluminum foil type wrapping. That's the only one that I would ever consider buying. People sometimes um, sell their stuff, you know. Here's today's. Live stream. I bought a used Pro 100 when connecting up. It gives me a 1300 paper jam error. So, how does a printer? So, anyway, what he is uh, trying to find out is that he cannot find, he simply cannot find any, any, um, like remnants of any kind of little piece of paper anywhere. All it takes is a tiny sliver of paper to fool a sensor into thinking there's a paper jam. Either that or the sensor said he bought a used one. Now, let's see. Why would I be selling my Pro 100 to anyone when it's almost nine years old? It's an old, in, in, in human years, it's probably older than me, and I'm old. Why would I be selling an old Pro 100? Because it has a problem. 
and I just let you figure it out. Give me a hundred bucks and I'll let you have my fully working printer, you know, printer. Well, it's not really because it immediately throws an error on the guy. And so what it could be, if we absolutely cannot find any kind of paper jam, one of the sensors, it thinks there's a paper jam. It's not operating right. So that that is something that has to be repaired. Is it, is it something worth repairing? Probably not. Probably not. For EX15,000 with PC Inks, what are you asking? I'm sorry. You're losing me here. No disrespect intended, but I don't know what you're asking. Are you asking specifically about the uh, XP15,000 with PC Inks? Or what? Does it work? Of course it works. It is actually what I'm using right now. I got probably like half a bottle of the original, no, just over half left. The gray is being used at a higher rate. Uh, red is probably the lowest used. Um, and let me see. I'll show you guys. average here so this is this is black okay let me turn it around black and I'll put gray next to it you can see actually no you cannot yeah, flip it around there you go so you see how much gray has been used and the black is very, very, very intense. Look at how it immediately coats the inside of the uh, plastic bottle. Where gray, you know, sort of, so-so. And then red. Eh, it's dropped a little bit. So you can see how much of each you use up, pretty much. So what I do is every month or so, I just top everything off. I got another set of bottles on open, ready to be used as well. So I got plenty of ink. Mike sent me two sets of ink. He forgot that he sent me one, and he sent me another one. Uh, oh, standing up did not help. Mm. All right. I think that we're going to call it a day, folks. I really appreciate you guys coming in, everyone. I think I missed, um, Miss Wendy didn't make it this Sunday. I wonder if she's okay. I wish her well either way. We had about, I think we hit a max of about 49, which is very good. So again, thank you so much. I should be feeling a lot better by next week. And so we will see you then. Bye-bye, everybody.